Hello guys, it's Carbot Rhino and welcome to one more Blade Right. For this video today, I have in my hands the prototype of Blitzkrieg, a new card game from PSC Games that's coming to Kickstarter and we're gonna have a little preview of it. Blitzkrieg, with an exclamation mark at the end, is a fast-paced card game for two players that recreates World War II in 20 minutes. It's an ideal war game for non-gamers as it's quick and easy to grasp, but gamers can enjoy it as well for the challenge it poses and the replayability. Players, instead of fighting battles with dice or cards, as it's usually the case in similar games, they allocate their military resources to different theaters' campaigns, trying to get victory points, more resources, special weapons, and strategic advantages as they play. One of the players will be the Axis Coalition player and the other one will be the Allied Coalition player. The board of the game shows five different theaters of operations that the two opponents will be fighting over. Here we see the war victory track of the game that will determine the winner and each theater of operations has its own battle track and a marker on it to show which of the two forces is currently winning the theater of operations. Each of the rows in the theaters of operations represents a campaign and each contains a number of battle spaces that can be occupied by the unit tokens of either player during the game. When players start to occupy the battle spaces with unit tokens, they need to start always from the active campaign in each theater of operations, which is the topmost campaign of the theater with at least one unoccupied battle space. You can place your token on any unoccupied battle space of the active campaign in a theater of operations. There is no order in that and there is no order in the theaters of operations. All of them can have an active campaign at the same time. Now, the battle spaces can either be land spaces, the brown ones that can be occupied by armies or air forces, sea spaces, the blue ones that can be occupied only by navies or air forces, or these spaces that can be occupied by any unit. The unit tokens all have a number on them which says how many spaces to advance the marker of the theater of operations where you just placed the token towards your direction. The blitz, the lightning icon, indicates that after you place the unit, you can immediately place another unit from your reserve to a battle space in the same theater of operations. There is also the general that is considered an army and it allows you to advance one space on the battle track for each army that you have already deployed in this theater of operations, including the general. The admiral works in exactly the same way as the general, but for navy. Before we move any further in the rules, let's see how to set up the game. You have the board with each battle marker on the middle of each theater's battle track and the two victory markers on the victory track. Each player shuffles their unit tokens in their bag and draws three, which they place behind their player screen, and this is your reserve. You shuffle these, which are the special weapons, and you place them face down next to the game board, forming the research pile, and the Axis player takes the first turn of the game. Now, the flow of the game is pretty straightforward. Players alternate in taking turns, and on their turn, they take one unit token from the reserve and they can place it on any free battle space on an active campaign. And they carry out the effect shown on the battle space they occupied. They move the battle marker towards their end of the corresponding battle track according to the number of their unit token and last they draw one unit token from the bag and place it in their reserve. Let's have a look at the battle space effects. This one is the industrial production which allows you to draw one unit token from your bag and add it to your reserve. This one is the improved version of it as it allows you to draw two tokens. Similarly to these two, we have the research industry, with which you draw one unit token from the research pile and add it to your reserve. The research one is the same, but instead of adding the research token to your reserve directly, you add it to your bag. There's also the bombing with which your opponent randomly puts one of his tokens in his reserve back in the bag. This is the propaganda, which advances you that many spaces on the war victory track, and last, we have the tactical and the strategic advantage. The tactical advantage advances this number of spaces on the battle track of the theater of operations where you just placed your unit. And the strategic advantage does the same but for any theater of operations except 
the one where you just placed your unit token. There are some extra special weapons in the research pile worth mentioning, like the nuclear bomb. It's considered an army, and when you place it, you advance six spaces on the battle track, but you retreat two spaces on all other Theater of Operations battle tracks that are not yet closed. There is also the spy, who copies the value and any special effect of the unit token just placed by your opponent, and the scientist, which you can place on any battle space, not only the topmost open campaign, and of any Theater of Operations you choose. It has no military value though, so you don't move the battle marker. Now let's see what happens when you close a campaign. When you place your unit token on the last vacant battle space of a campaign, that campaign closes. So if I had placed this token here, I would advance the battle marker three spaces towards me, and I would give myself, since it's my side the battle marker is currently on, the campaign victory points and I advance my war victory marker that many spaces. Additionally, if I have reached one of these icons, this adds one more point, or two respectively, on my war victory track. If you place your unit token and you bring your battle marker because of that onto the very last space on your side of the battle track, you immediately close and win the entire theater of operations. In this case, you carry out the effect in any order you prefer of all the unoccupied battle spaces of the corresponding theater of operations and you score the victory points of the campaigns you closed this way. Important note is that you cannot close a theater of operations with the strategic advantage that we saw before, it has to be from placing a unit token there. There are two conditions that can trigger the game end. One is when at the beginning of your turn you cannot place any unit tokens, either because you don't have any or because the units you have cannot be placed anywhere on the board. In that case, your opponent immediately is declared the winner. The other game and condition is when a player has 25 or more war victory points at the end of their turn. If that player is the Axis player, then the Allied player gets one final turn and the player with the most victory points is the winner. If it's the Allied player, the one who triggered the game end, then that player has won the game. If there is a tie between the two players, then again the Allied player has won the game. So that was the Blitzkrieg preview. I think now you're ready for your first game. If you liked my explanation of the game, just give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't for more videos. And in the description, you'll find the link to the Kickstarter campaign of the game. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.